Hi, I'm John, and I'm a level one chef. My name's Alejandro, and I'm a level two chef. Hi, I'm Saul. I've been a professional chef for the past 20 years. Today, I'm making chicken quesadillas. They're super tasty, super easy, and also just a fun snack for like any time. Today, we're gonna make quesadillas al pastor, and they're gonna be sincronizada style, which just means two tortillas stacked. So it's a perfect marriage between tacos, al pastor, and quesadillas. So today, we're making a blue corn quesadilla with handmade queso fresco, queso Oaxaca, roasted tomatillo sauce, and squash blossoms. I'm gonna use these simple flour tortillas. They're super tasty, you can buy them at any supermarket. If you're in a hurry, you could buy a really nice bag of tortillas like these. I usually go with a little more buttery and like kind of fancier tortillas, but you could buy whichever you find at the store. No need to ground your own wheat or corn. You just pull them out of the fridge and they're ready to go. Today I'm gonna be making a blue corn quesadilla and we're gonna use blue corn flour and three simple ingredients, salt and water. You wanna mix it with your fingers, no gloves. That's what the flavor is, on your fingers. <laughs> I'm gonna brush the top of my tortilla with oil and then just like a paintbrush, it'll cook more evenly on the pan when I go to cook it later. As you can see, these look nice, burnt, and buttery. The best way to know when your dough is ready is when, when the dough doesn't stick to your hands. It's still very dry to me. I'm gonna add a little bit more water. I start to make a little bowl. See, it doesn't stick to my hands. It looks like it's ready. So I'm just gonna lay them out here. Later, we're gonna prep them up and put really good stuff inside. Today, we're gonna be making queso fresco. Normally, you can use only milk, but since I'm a professional, I'm gonna use some buttermilk and whipped cream. We're gonna add vinegar. You're gonna stir, you shut it off, and you wait. I use this Mexican cheese blend. It's available in the supermarket. Looks like it's got cheddar, Monterey Jack. I have queso asadero right in front of me. You don't have to use queso asadero, sometimes it might be hard to get, but queso Oaxaca or any other kind of melting cheese would be really good for a quesadilla. It's been 10 minutes, we're gonna break the cheese. Look at this. Watch me dump all the queso fresco all over the table. Voila. We're gonna squeeze a little bit. We're gonna add a little bit of salt. Now we're gonna put it on the fridge to chill for sort of four or six hours. I'll be right back. It's already shredded. Make sure to not cut your knuckles because you don't want bloody cheese. Not in the recipe. I'm just gonna open it up. Lots of cheese. And you know what? I always say, cheese is good to taste because you can never have too much cheese. Mm. Now we have a full bowl of shredded queso asadero. And another cheese, I'm gonna use queso Oaxaca. It's the Mexican cousin of the mozzarella. I would say my favorite cheese is probably mozzarella, but for quesadilla, I wouldn't use mozzarella cheese. You could, you could if you want, but I find this Mexican cheese blend is just way better. It's like strings. Now, the reason why we do this is because we wanna make sure the quesadilla melts nice and evenly. The next step is gonna be the filling. I got this beautiful rotisserie chicken right here from the supermarket. It's pre-cooked. We're just gonna shred it up and then we'll put it in our quesadilla as our filling. We are gonna start with the marinade for the pork. So the first step is to chop the pineapple next. Cut chunks and you just put them aside in a bowl. What I see here now, it's basically what I grew up eating. The pasote, watercress, flor de calabaza, avocados, jalapenos. It's so much easier to use your hands. Like, look how easy. Pull it apart. Now I have the chile guajillo and ancho, which I boil them for 30 minutes to soften them. We are gonna cut off the tops, and then we're gonna throw them into our food processor. So along with the chili, we are gonna put one cup of orange juice, put in some oregano and some garlic, and blend it until it's like truly dark red orange, almost brown. These ingredients are so delicate that you don't need to do anything to them. Thin slices of porcini mushrooms. The other ingredient, a pasote. That's the Mexican cousin of the basil. Nice avocado from Mexico. Thin slices of jalapeno, because we need a little bit of heat. We also need a little bit of color. Watercress, this is gonna add the the freshness that I'm looking for and a little bit of a, of a bitterness too. Now we have our slow cooker here and all of our ingredients. We're gonna start with the pork. After that, chile, guajillo and ancho, marinade. Put in your pineapple, put your onion, your cilantro, and then you put your salt. And lastly, a cup of beer. So I like to use Mexican light beer. That'll give it some extra juice. Just put the lid on and set it on high for four hours. I think they even make pre-shredded chicken, but I'm gonna shred my own because <laughs> I know how to do that. Today we're making a roasted tomato jalapeno salsa. The key of making a great salsa is by having simple quality ingredients. For example, a white onion. 
and we are going to roast them because we want them to be sweet like our chef. After the onion, I'm gonna do the jalapeno. Tomatillos have a really nice uh, citric flavor, which is great for a sauce and a topping. It's the Mexican cousin of the tomato. Unlike other folks who like to home make their sauces, you too can buy them in the supermarket. I feel like sometimes you buy store-bought and it's hard kind of measuring how hot it's gonna be or how mild or how actually like tasty. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel here. I got some store-bought guac, some store-bought salsa, and some sour cream because time is essence. Now we're gonna do a little bit of garlic. That's the color that we want. Nice charcoal. Let's add a little bit of salt. We're gonna move on to the chile serrano. Cut the top, slice this open in half. We're also gonna use some chile de arbol. Chile de arbol, that's gonna get the heat that this salsa needs. Now the tomatoes. If you wanna have a more milder sauce, remove the seeds. I'm going to remove the vegetables. The cousin, the niece, the nephew, the uncle jalapeño. We're gonna broil them for five minutes, then take them out, flip them over, and broil them for five more minutes. And these will be great as toppings for the quesadilla. You can pick and choose which ones you want. I happen to like all of them. All right, so while the tomatillos and chile serrano are broiling, we are gonna start prepping the other part of the sauce. We have our onion, cilantro, our lime, our garlic, and our salt, and we're gonna blend it. I'm struggling a little bit to get all the ingredients, so you might just have to turn it off, give it a little shake. I think if you wanna make your own guac, that's great. Have fun, same with salsa. Okay, well no, it's blended enough. This is my Mexican blender. Start with garlic and your two peppers. I can start smelling the spiciness of the pepper. Let's add the rest of the family. The onions, tomatillo, tomato. Now we have our broiled tomatillos and chile serrano straight from the oven, and you're just gonna plop them in there. Now, salsa martajada is basically roasted vegetables with peppers on a molcajete. And yeah, it's supposed to be chunky. We have this really nice consistency and now we're gonna make it creamy. And to do that, we're gonna use an avocado. This salsa looks almost ready. We're gonna add some fresh cilantro. This is going to be delicious for my quesadilla. All right, I think that's good. Now that it's fully blended, we're gonna stick it in the fridge, let it cool until you're ready to serve your quesadilla. We are ready to assemble our quesadilla. So now you're gonna get a bag like this, close it together in half. Another half. This is one way to save the world. Use your plastic bags to press your tortillas. So there we have it. Make sure to scoop up as much chunkiness as you can. All the cilantro, the onion, the pineapple. If the dough doesn't stick to your hands, that means it's nice and ready for your tortilla. Now you're gonna put this one right here, press it. When you make this type of tortilla, it needs to be fresh. I'm gonna put my tortilla face down in the pan with the oil side, and then on half of the tortilla, cheese, and then a layer of chicken. We are gonna grab our tortillas, and we're gonna sprinkle them with a little bit of cheese. Lay your tortilla flat, and then you're gonna grab your pork, and you're gonna put some on top. Yeah, a little more, why not? You can never have too much chicken. And then another layer of cheese. cheese. I also have green peppers here. You could just give them a little roast. And then you put your other tortilla, kind of like a sandwich. I'm just gonna take half of my tortilla and fold it over. We're gonna add our queso Oaxaca, the porcini mushrooms. We're gonna add the squash blossoms, a little bit of jalapenos, and then the beautiful queso fresco, the watercress. You press it a little bit, make sure the yeah, cheese stays. We're gonna add a little bit of oil, because I want my quesadillas to be a little bit of crunchy. So I'm gonna let this cook for about two to three minutes, let it get golden brown on the bottom, and I can just check it easily with my spatula. But once it's golden brown, then I'll flip it and let it cook on the other side. Who's a pro? If this is why you pay $25 for a quesadilla and a restaurant. Now it's time to plate up my quesadilla. I'm just gonna cut it into thirds. Cut it in fourths. I'm just gonna lay them on a plate like this. We're gonna also put these on. How about that? Now this is ready to eat. I'm gonna grab some green salsa and I'm just gonna kind of put it up top or in the middle, make it seem like I'm at a fancy restaurant. Grab some sour cream. I don't even want to put anything else, but I'm gonna have to make it look prettier. Otherwise, I won't look like a pro. We have the roasted salsa, thin slice of avocado, maybe just one, quash blast. A little bit of this. This jalapeno, just in case if you're like me, they told me to eat healthy, so I'm gonna put a little bit more watercress. And we wanna finish it with some queso fresco. And this is my quesadilla. And this is my Al Pastor quesadilla sincronizada. And there you have it, 
squash blossom quesadilla with porcini mushrooms, salsa martajada, homemade queso fresco, Oaxaca cheese. What else you want? What else you want? Oh God. Mm -hmm. It's everything you want in a snack. This is so good. It's kind of a whole experience once you take a bite because you'll have the tortilla, you'll have the cheese, then you'll have the marinade and then you'll get some citrusy from either the pineapple or the lime. And the green salsa just is a really nice finish. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Delicious. It's a, me a Mexican market in one bite. Mexico, right here, with a little bit of Italian, thanks to the porcini mushrooms. This is just incredible. Maybe I should become a chef. Quesadillas are a delicious cheese dish to make any time of day. Let's see how each of our three chefs made theirs. John and Alejandro both used store-bought flour tortillas, which are convenient and soft made from enriched wheat flour with added leavening agents such as sodium acid pyrophosphate and monocalcium phosphate and antioxidants such as citric acid. These chemicals extend shelf life and make a consistent product. They're readily accessible. You can buy them at any supermarket. Saul handmade blue corn tortillas. The corn flour is blue due to the presence of purple or blue pigments called anthocyanins in the corn. John used store-bought tomato-based salsa. It has a cooked taste to it because the salsa is hot packed in the jar, making it shelf stable for a long time. Alejandro made a green sauce with a litany of green ingredients like tomatillos, serrano chilies, cilantro, and avocado. The tomatillos and serranos are dark roasted, which brings out a smoky quality to his salsa. As the base of his salsa, they add a layer of complexity from the pyrazines and heterocyclic amines formed during roasting. Avocado is diced and added at the end. It adds creaminess because it's high in unsaturated fatty acids. Saul's martajada salsa is made with charred ingredients that are diced and then ground in a mocajete. And make a lot of noise so everybody can hear you that you're making a salsa. A special cooking apparatus, like a mortar and pestle, but usually made from volcanic rock, allowing maximal flavor compounds to be exposed. John used a combination of various cheeses like Colby and Monterey Jack that was already shredded. And it says Mexican, so you got that going for you, great. Monterey Jack is a cheese that's been around since the 1600s, where it was first made by Franciscan monks in California. Its name is derived from the Jack, an apparatus that was originally used to press the curds. These cheese blends have preservatives added, but still have a shorter shelf life once they're opened because the cheese is already shredded, exposing maximum surface area to potential foodborne pathogens. Alejandro added shredded queso asadera to his quesadilla. This cheese is slightly yellow colored because it's a cow's milk cheese. Cows consume beta carotene when they eat grass, but can't metabolize it, so the golden color is expressed in their milk. Saul made his own queso fresco by heating milk and cream together to just below boiling. This destabilizes some of the watery soluble whey proteins. He added acidic buttermilk and vinegar, which are positively charged and destabilize the negatively charged kappa casein protein in the milk. The product of this destabilization are curds, which can be pressed into cheese, and whey, the high protein watery byproduct that is a beautiful yellow green color from the presence of riboflavin, also known as vitamin B2. Save the whey and use it in pancakes, coffee cakes, sauces, or anywhere you use an acidic liquid. The next time you're making delicious cheese-filled quesadillas, we hope you'll take some of these tips from our three amazing chefs.